Hi, room 15. This is chapter 26, Secret Anim at the Meeting. Mrs. Risby slept well and soundly, the day just finished having been the longest and hardest she had ever known. She awoke in the morning with a smile. Her house was warm, and it was safe at last. Her children slept peacefully. Oh, I have a spider on me. Look. Sorry. Her, where was I? Her children slept peacefully beside her. Timothy's breathing was quiet and easy. They could stay in this house now as long as they needed to. On one, on some warm day later in the spring, when Timothy was strong again, they would move to the summer house down by the brook. Another nice thing, she thought, when they left the house, she would close up the entrance tunnel so that no one else could find it. Undisturbed by the plow, it would be ready and waiting for them in the fall. It could be theirs forever, thanks to the rats. The rats, in her half dreaming state, she had forgotten. They were in terrible danger. What would they do? She felt as if she ought to go and offer help them, offer to help them, but help how? She couldn't think of anything that she could do. At that moment, she heard a voice calling her from above. Mrs. Frisbee. She left the bed and went to the bottom of the entrance hole. Yes? Who's calling? It's me, Brutus. Can you come up? Mrs. Frisbee climbed up and out of her front door, blinking in the early morning sunlight. Nicodemus wants to know if you can come with me. He's having a meeting. Just let me wake the children and tell them. Two minutes later, she was walking with Brutus towards the rose bush. What does Nicodemus want? It's about the men. Justin told us last night. Nicodemus thinks they may be from Nim. He wants to ask you more about what Mr. Fitzgibbons had said. That morning, there were two rats on sentry duty, one just inside the entrance to the rosebush, watching Mr. Fitzgibbons' house, another at the arch where Brutus had stood. All of the rest were gathered in a large assembly room Mrs. Frisbee had seen once they got off the elevator. Nicodemus, Justin, Arthur, and two other rats sat on the raised platform at the end. The rest sat facing them, filling every square inch of the floor space except for the aisle in the center. Mrs. Frisbee had never seen so many rats. Even the younger ones were present. She spotted Isabella, staring up at the platform with wide, round eyes. Some of the mothers held small, be small babies at their sides. Most of them looked anxious. There was an air of tension, but none of panic. Brutus led her up the center aisle to the raised platform. There was a table on it, covered with papers and one vacant space, where a chair had been placed for Mrs. Frisbee. The rats waited in complete silence while she sat down. Then Nicodemus said, quite formally, Justin has told us all that had happened, Mrs. Frisbee. It seems you have more than repaid us for the help we gave you in moving your house. Just as your husband did once, you have saved us from disaster. Death or capture, we do not yet know which. Justin gave her a wink. Mrs. Frisbee has a taste of capture herself last night. Would you tell us as well as you can remember, word for word, what Mr. Fitzgibbon said about the rats and about the men who were at the store? As well as I can remember it, Mrs. Frisbee's voice sounded small in the big room. Mr. Fitzgibbons had said had uh, said a strange thing that happened in the hardware store. Henderson's, he called it. Her memory was good. She had listened with great care to what Mr. Fitzgibbons had said, and she was able to recall the whole conversation word for word. The rat sat quietly while she told it. Then Nicodemus went back over it, asking questions. You say that Mr. Fitzgibbons had said six or seven rats? Did she ever say which number it really was? No, I don't think he paid much attention to the number. Jenner's group was seven, said Justin, but it could be a coincidence. Did he say how far the town was where this happened, or did he name it? No, but it must not be very far. Had he been, he'd been there, there and back that day. Did anyone see his car go out, Nicodemus asked the others? I heard it, Brutus said. I was on duty. It went after lunch. And he was back by dinner. But which direction? If we knew, we might send somebody. You see, Nicodemus explained to Mrs. Frisbee, we need to know who these men are. If they're from Nim, things are much worse for us. We'd never make it, said Arthur, driving at, say, 40 or 50 miles an hour. Mr. Fitzgibbons might have gone 15 or 20 miles in any direction and returned easily the same afternoon on the map. There was a road map on the table. You could see it could have been any one of half and a dozen small towns, and each one of them might have a hardware store. You're right, of course, said Nicodemus. Without the name, the, the idea is hopeless. He turned back to Mrs. Frisbee. Mr. Fitzgibbon said the rats were grouped under around the motor as if they were trying to move it. That's what he said the owner said, had told him, but he didn't see it himself, and that the motor was plugged in. Had been left plugged in, plugged in, Mrs. Frisbee quoted, but we don't know who plugged it in. I got the impression, Mrs. Frisbee said, from the way he said it, that the store owner had left it plugged in, but I'm not sure. That would make sense, Arthur said. If it was Jenner, and if they had plugged it in themselves, they would have known better than to try and move it. So they must not have realized it was probably pretty dark in the store. Poor Jenner, said Nicodemus. I wish he had stayed with us. 
It will be poor us, poor us, said one of the rats at the table. Mrs. Frisby did not know his name. If we don't get on with this. He did mention the doctor's name, Nicodemus said. Did he, did he say even a word about what he looked like? No. Did he describe the truck at all? No. Only that it was full of equipment. Are you sure about the headline in the local paper? Mechanized rats invade hardware store? I'm sure that's what Mr. Fitzgibbon says, but I don't think he saw it. He didn't say so. In a way, that's the most puzzling thing about the whole story, Nicodemus said. Why is that? asked Justin. Because the headline doesn't really fit the facts. You don't call a bunch of dead rats mechanized just because you find them on the shelf near a motor. Maybe not, said the nameless rat, but then why did the newspaper say that? I'm wondering, Nicodemus said, if perhaps there wasn't more to the story. Some stronger reason to think they were really taking the motor away or that they knew how to use it. Maybe some of the other motors had been stolen, Justin said, of so or some tools that would make them seem mechanized. It would, said Nicodemus, and it would explain why the doctor meant what he said they had more checking to do in town. They're looking for the things that were missing, Arthur said, sounding suddenly worried. They were looking for just Jenner's headquarters, and if they find it, we're just guessing, of course, Nicodemus said, but it's a possibility, and a bad one. It means, Nicodemus continued, that we have no choice. We've got to assume they're from Nim. We've also got to assume that by now they have found Jenner's headquarters, whatever cave or cavern they were using. And, said Justin, they are now looking for us. Why for us? asked for one of the rats. Why wouldn't they think Jenner's group are the only ones? They might, Nicodemus admitted, but I don't think so. After all, they know that there were 20 of us originally. Why should there be only seven now? And we already know that they're coming out of here, in quite a hurry at that. So if they're from them, obviously they are looking for us. I think, said Arthur, that we've had to make some plans, and quickly. I agree, said Nicodemus. It's a new situation and a tricky one. We won't be able to do everything we hope for. There isn't time. And somehow we have to convince the exterminators when they come that we aren't more of a mechanized rats they're looking for. We won't be able to move any more food to Thorn Valley, Nicodemus continued. We'll have to get along with what we have got stored there. About an 18-month supply, if we're careful. The seeds, I believe, are already moved. Yes, said Arthur. The last load went yesterday. So with luck, we'll have our own first crops this summer and fall. We won't have time to destroy the motors or the books or the furniture as we planned. Instead, we'll move everything to the cave, and then we'll seal off its entrances to its cave as if it never existed. That can be done, Arthur said. But there's more. We've got to pull all of the wires and lights from the tunnel. They're likely to dig it up and the carpet. We've got to tear down the arch. Then, when all that's done, when everything is hidden in the cave, we'll find it in the stairway. We'll fill in the stairway and elevator shaft. We'll seal off everything except for the upper storage room and the tunnels leading to the front and out the back. When they dig, they'll find that room. It's as big as an ordinary rat hole. Justin, tonight, take a group of, do of a dozen or so. Go to the Fitzgibbon's garbage can. Bring back a load of the worst smelling bar garbage you can find. The storage room is going to become an ordinary typical rat hole, not in the least mechanized or civilized. Nicodemus turned to Arthur. What do you think? I think we can do it. We won't get much sleep, though. Justin said, but there's one more thing. Don't they think it's odd, especially if they're from Nim, finding just an empty hole? Nicodemus said, I was coming to that. He sounded suddenly very tired. Tomorrow morning, as soon as it's light, the main group leaves for Thorn Valley. But some of us will have to stay behind. As Justin says, if they find just an empty hole, they're sure to be suspicious. And they'll keep digging. So when they come with their gas truck, they've got to find some rats here. A rear guard. I'd say at least ten. Mrs. Frisby slowly walked home keeping through the edge of the woods and keeping out of sight. Justin had instantly volunteered for the rear guard. Brutus was second, and behind him, eight more. There were fifty more waiting behind them. Enough, enough, said Nicodemus. Isabella, in tears, had run forward. I want to stay, please, she had pleaded, looking despairingly at Justin. No children, said Nicodemus, and her mother led her away, still weeping. Those ten, the ten who would remain, did not face certain death, nor certain capture. The exterminators, they presumed, would make some noise, especially if they cleared away the rosebush. The rats would be alerted. When the men pumped gas, as expected, into the hole, the pump would also make a noise. The air below would move as the gas flowed. When they felt that, the, airs, the rats would scramble out the back exit, past the sealed out cave, emerge as noisily as possible in the blackberry bramble, indeed, show themselves, and dash off into the woods. But won't they block the rear exit or put a net over it? We'll give them another rear exit to block. Arthur said cryptically, one that's easier to find. Mother, why are you so quiet? asked Teresa. They were sitting down to dinner for the first time in their newly moved house. You seem sad. 
I suppose I am, Mrs. Frisbee said, because the rats are all going away. But that's no reason. It's true. They've moved our house, and it was nice of them, but we didn't really know them. I was getting to, them, to know them pretty well. Where are they going? Cynthia asked. To a new home, a long way away. When? Tomorrow morning. Will you go to see them off? I think I will. But why are they moving? asked Timothy. Because they want to, said Mrs. Frisbee. Someday soon she would tell them the whole story, but not that night.